Did you know that the Roman Empire once had four emperors in a single year? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today's video is all about the chaotic year of the four emperors in ancient Rome. Don't forget the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization and you can find us on Patreon, a brilliant site where you can support our work and receive exclusive benefits in return. Your support helps us create new videos every single week. So make sure to check it out via the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. The year of the four emperors in 69 CE was a period in which four men ruled the Roman Empire in quick succession, Galba, Otho, Vitellius and Vespasian. The Julio-Claudian dynasty had ruled Rome since Augustus Caesar founded the empire in 27 BCE, but ended when the last of those emperors, Nero, committed suicide in 68 CE, without naming an heir to the throne. Nero's reign had become increasingly erratic and unpopular, leading to uprisings and the emergence of the general and governor Galba as claimant for the role of Nero's successor. Galba ruled for eight months, from June 68 until his assassination in January of 69 CE, Otho for three months until he killed himself in April, and Vitellius for eight months until his assassination in December of 69, when Vespasian was declared emperor. The year of the four emperors was the first time Rome would experience the social upheaval of populist, self-serving political leaders and the chaos caused by a lack of policy of succession. But it would not be the last, as seen in the later year of the five emperors in 193 CE and the crisis of the third century. By 67 CE, Nero's reign had become so unpopular, it inspired the Roman governor Vindex to write to others whom he thought he could trust, calling for an organised revolt. The people he wrote to denounced him to Nero, except for Galba, governor of Spain. In April of 68 CE, Galba accepted Vindex's proposal to overthrow Nero and replace him. There were still many who were loyal to Nero though, and marched on Vindex, who was defeated and committed suicide. Nero continued his hold on power until the Praetorian Guard shifted their support to Galba, and the Senate declared Nero an enemy of the people. Nero killed himself in June of 68 CE, and Galba was declared emperor, arriving in Rome at the head of his army in October. His reign began badly as he betrayed most of those who had supported him, including the Praetorian Guard. Galba reigned for eight months, and during that time, he alienated the Senate, the military, his former supporters, and the people through cruel and arbitrary policies that only enriched him and a trio of trusted men who had come with him from Spain, Vinius, Laco, and Icelus while ignoring and mistreating others who had supported him, including the general Otho. The year 69 CE began with the legions of Germania declaring for their general Vitellius as emperor. Galba tried to shore up his position by adopting as heir the nobleman Lucius Calpurnius Piso Licinianus, who came from a well-respected family who traced their lineage back to the notable figures of Pompey the Great and Marcus Licinius Crassus. But this did nothing but enrage Otho, one of his primary supporters, who had expected to be named heir. Galba and Licinianus were assassinated by order of Otho on 15th of January 69 CE, and afterwards Vinius, Laco and Icelus met the same fate. Otho had come to Rome with Galba as one of his main supporters, but distanced himself as the emperor became more and more unpopular. After Galba was assassinated, the Senate declared Otho emperor, but Vitellius refused to withdraw his claim and sent his legions against Rome. Otho's gestures of reconciliation and peace were rejected, and he was forced to meet Vitellius's troops in combat at the First Battle of Bedriacum in April of 69 CE. Otho's forces were badly defeated, and instead of prolonging the conflict and costing more lives, he committed suicide after reigning for three months. 
Vitellius was declared emperor by the Senate, who had no real choice in the matter after Otho's death, and he led the rest of his army toward Rome. Vitellius had become popular with his troops in Germania and continued to allow them the same freedoms and lack of discipline as before on his march, during which they lived off the land, taking whatever they wanted from the towns they passed through and throwing lavish parties for the new emperor. Upon his arrival, he threw himself a triumph and then insisted on being treated to large feasts four times a day. He essentially ignored the responsibilities of his position, indulged himself and his friends constantly, and placated the people with parades and spectacles that nearly bankrupted the imperial treasury. When lenders demanded payment for these events, he had them executed along with anyone else he viewed as a threat or who displeased him. He reigned for eight months from April to December 69 CE before he was assassinated and replaced by Vespasian. Vespasian was commanding legions in Judea in July of 69 when his generals, already tired of Vitellius's ineptitude, encouraged him to proclaim himself emperor. With the support of his troops, he marched toward Rome, gaining further support along the way. His advanced force under the general Marcus Antonius Primus defeated the army of Vitellius at the Second Battle of Bedriacum in October of 69 and moved on toward Rome. Vitellius tried first to raise more troops to defend the city, then negotiate a peace, but the people of Rome were finished with him, and he was killed by a mob in December. Vespasian was declared emperor on the 21st of December 69 CE, ending the year of the four emperors. He was an efficient emperor, ruling for 10 years and founding the Flavian dynasty, which provided Rome with much needed stability and allowed for the development of art, culture, and some of the best known public works of ancient Rome, including the Colosseum. Which of the four emperors do you think was most legitimate? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos posted every week. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. If you like my shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more in our shop at worldhistory.store, or you can find a link for it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon with another video.